Okay, we're on mole calculations three. So for mole calculations three, you're going to be doing two-step problems where you convert grams to atoms, molecules, or formula units, or you go the other direction and convert atoms, molecules, or formula units to grams. But for each one, you have to stop off at moles first, which is what makes this a two-step problem. So let's take a look at student exercise six. What is the mass in grams of 2.01 times 10 to the 20 second atoms of sulfur. So you're going to put 2.01 times 10 to the 20 second atoms of sulfur in the upper left hand corner. You put atoms of sulfur on the diagonal and we have to go to moles of sulfur first so you put that up on top. Now remember I taught you that one mole of anything equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. And in this class, it will mostly be atoms, molecules, or formula units. So you put the number one next to moles. So it's going to go up on top. And you're going to put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd next to atoms on the bottom. And you're going to divide. So here we're converting atoms to moles. And when you do that, you divide by Avogadro's number. So in your calculator, it should be... 2.01 second E22 divided by 6.022 second E23. Do not put a multiplication symbol in there before you put in the exponent on the power of 10 because it will throw your answer off. Okay, I'm going to write out a few decimal places. I'm not going to round yet because I have another step to do. I'm just going to leave that in my calculator. Now that you have moles, we need to convert to grams. So when you're converting moles to grams, you're going to multiply by the molar mass. So we're going to take the answer from the first step, and it's going to become the upper left-hand corner for the second step. Put mole sulfur on the diagonal and grams of sulfur up on top like this. Remember, I taught you that one mole of anything is also equal to the atomic mass from the periodic table in grams. So put the number one next to mole on the bottom. And then look at the periodic table to get the molar mass of sulfur. Sulfur is 32.065. I told you to round it two places past the decimal. So it's going to be 32.07, like this. You're going to multiply by 32.07. And since you started with three significant figures here, you're going to end with three significant figures in your final answer, which is 1.07. So 1.07 grams of sulfur is the answer, okay? And you can see on the board behind me, we converted atoms to moles by dividing by Avogadro's number, and then we converted moles to grams by multiplying by the molar mass. That's at the top of the second page of the chapter handout, so if you want to memorize that, you can. Okay, now let's go to student exercise number seven. How many oxygen molecules are present in 0 0.470 grams of oxygen? So you're starting at grams. You need to convert to moles first and then convert moles to molecules. So 0 0.470 grams of oxygen is like this. Put grams of oxygen on the diagonal and put one mole up on top. When you convert grams to moles, you have to divide by the molar mass, which comes from the periodic table. So on the bottom next to grams, you put the molar mass of O2. One oxygen on the periodic table is 16, but since you have O2, you have to multiply it by 2. So 16 times 2 is 32. So you're going to put 32 on the bottom like this, and you're going to divide it out. So 0 0.470 divided by 32 and I'm going to write out a few decimal places. I'm not rounding yet because I'm not done. I have one more step to do. So here's your answer in moles. Now we're going to convert moles to molecules. So that means I have to multiply by Avogadro's number. So the answer in step one is now going to be in the upper left hand corner for step two, like this. Put moles of O2 on the diagonal like this, and then put molecules of O2 up on top. The number 1 goes where moles is in 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, 
goes where molecules is. So you're going to multiply this out. You're going to end up getting 8.84 times 10 to the 21st molecules of O2. Okay. We started with three significant figures here, so that's why I'm ending with three significant figures down here. And if you look back at this figure on the board, we started with grams and we converted grams to moles, which means you multiply, I'm sorry, divide by the molar mass first. Then once you have moles, convert to molecules by multiplying by Avogadro's number. So now you can do mole calculations three, and that's it.